Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we're going to talk about Charles Law, uh, a nice follow-up to Robert Boyle's Law. Um, Charles, Jacques Charles, uh, pretty famous uh, scientist. Uh, beyond, besides giving credit for Charles Law, which although um, really was a, a dis rediscovered by another guy named Guy Lussac, um, that we'll talk about a little later, uh, or Gay Lussac, um, he actually gives credit to Charles because Charles uh, did the work, although unpublished, about 20 years prior. Um, another interesting fact about Jacques Charles is he was one of the first people to experiment with lighter-than-air balloons. Um, and so the legend goes that uh, he, uh, he, he and his brother uh, released a uh, balloon in Paris um, and were able to fly around, got, uh, got up to about uh, 3,000 feet tops. Uh, but they terrified the peasants, and when they landed, they destroyed the balloon. So... Um, that sounds like a good story there. Uh, also, uh, if you paid a lot of money, you got to be right up front to watch the um, the balloon launch. So that was like, I guess, the first uh, Kickstarter campaign <laughs> was right there, some crowdfunding. But anyway, all right, Charles Law. Um, it's the relationship between volume and temperature. And I like to think of Charlie Brown. You know, think of Charlie Brown with a balloon. If Charlie Brown, uh, you know, if Lucy trekked Charlie Brown into going into a meat locker, oh, rats, you know, he'd be sitting there all cold and the balloon would get smaller. Um, if you don't believe me, take a balloon full of air and stick it in the freezer. Come back a little while later and you'll see that the balloon got smaller. Now, kinetic molecular theory explains that quite well. Remember, if the uh, molecules are slowing down, the collisions are going to go down. And a balloon has a variable volume, so it's actually going to shrink. So, um, remember that all these gas laws are based on the principle that all other things are equal. You know, so for Charles Law, uh, the amount's not changing, the pressure's not changing. For Boyle's law, um, the temperature is not changing, the amount's not changing. So everything else has to stay equal. If you start changing more than one variable, you have a different law. And so as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up, and vice versa. As the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. Again, if uh, you know, uh, if Charlie Brown's balloon were to end up inside an oven, um, it would expand uh, until it eventually popped, probably because of the pressure. So again, so keep keep that toy balloon idea in mind. Now I've, I I tried really hard. It's 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 really only relevant. This law is really all about changing temperature to look at volume changes. You know I, I've been racking my brain to come up with an example of the color area, uh, uh, the uh, the idea that could you change volume um, to get a temperature change. But the only problem is if all other things being equal, I can't think of a situation where you're going to change volume. Uh, but not change pressure or amount. And so really, Charles' law is mainly used with increasing or decreasing temperature. I just can't think of any example where you could change the volume and hold everything else constant. So, uh, so that makes Charles' law a little easier. So let's look through two examples of Charles' law, just like we did for Boyle's law. Pockets. <laughs> anyway. So uh, we've got a, uh, a sample of gas occupies 24 cubic meters. Um, what would the volume become at 400 Kelvin? So if we multiply the temperature by four, um, we should expect that the volume should also increase by a factor of four. Notice that the temperature is in Kelvin. Remember, Kelvin is an absolute temperature scale. If you leave your temperature in Celsius, you will get the wrong answer, and a lot of the time you will not even realize it's the wrong answer. So just be really careful about that. Anyway, so V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Um, that's Charles' law. Again, V1 over T1 have to equal a constant, so if one goes up, the other goes up. So it's a nice way to remember your direct relationship. I like to solve for the variable in question because then I can just plug in my stuff and the units will take care of themselves. So Kelvin over Kelvin will cancel out. Um, so then I'm left with cubic meters uh, times four, so four times 24. So it is exactly what I thought, um, 96 cubic meters. So that makes sense. As the temperature goes up, the volume's gonna go up. And we'll look at one more example here. So. I've got a 300-degree um, balloon. Um, what's going to happen to the temperature if the volume expands? All right. So again, notice that I'm dealing with changing temperatures, you know, and seeing what happens. Um, so I'm just kind of asked. I asked it backwards, but nonetheless. Now notice that what I did is I changed the temperature to Kelvin. If you don't do that, you will get the wrong. Well, it'll look like a fine answer, but it'll be wrong. So I'm going to solve for the variable. This time I'm solving for T2. And I'm going to plug it in. Again, liters are going to cancel out this time, and I'll multiply the temperature by 3. 
And so it's exactly what I thought. Again, I'm limited to two sig figs in this case uh, because uh, 2.5 and 7.5 only have two sig figs. So there you are, Charles' law um, that follows up Boyle's law. We'll continue on to Gay-Lussac's law. And then I'll show you why you can forget about all those <laughs> when we talk about the combined gas law. So thanks for watching and have a great day.